Hello everyone, and welcome back to Oregon Explorer. My name is Owen Sammons, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Jane Johnson, and she is the organist here at Crestwood Christian Church. And Jane is also the Dean of the Lexington Chapter of the American Guild of Organists. So thank you, Jane, for being with me today. And as usual, uh, make yourself comfortable, grab your favorite beverage, kick up your feet, and enjoy today's episode of Oregon Explorer. Crestwood Christian Church is ideally situated at the intersection of Glendover and Belafonte Roads. Formed in the late 1950s, as Lexington was experiencing a population boom, Crestwood is a mid-century modern, sprawling campus. The sanctuary is bathed in natural light from the massive skylight that runs the whole length of the church and even wraps around the front and back walls. The architect, Byron Romanovitz, said of the design, History tells us that the traditional nave with seating on either side of a central aisle symbolizes, among other things, a ship. The nave is so named because nave is derived from the Latin navis, meaning ship. Consider that in the early Christian era, the only possible device in which large groups of persons could be transported together was a ship, and we begin to see how this association was formed. Well, consider me sold. The result is really effective. The organ at Crestwood is a unique combination of different ranks from varying pipe organ builders, ultimately finessed together by David Bottom, as Jane will explain. We're here at the console with Jane. Why don't you tell us what's interesting about this organ? Well, I think what intrigues me about the organ is that it's an interesting compilation from different builders. The original organ is a 1971 Holloway, and that was primarily the great and some of the current pedal. Okay. Um, there is an eight foot Dulciana on the great that came from the Christian church in Danville after they had a fire, and um, it's molar. It was in the original organ here at Crestwood which was in the chapel in Hopper Hall, which is another building here on our campus. Okay. Now the swell was added when we came to this um, building sanctuary in I think the mid 80s or thereabouts. All right. And I've got my cheat sheet, which you'll see here why I need it because this is a strange conglomeration of stuff, but it works. Okay. Okay, at the time, David Bottom put all this in. David was the curator of keyboard instruments at the University of Kentucky mm -hmm. and uh, did most of the work on this instrument until he retired. At the time, the chests, the reservoirs, and the blower were all new. Okay. The strings, which are my probably my favorite stop on the instrument, are Pilcher. Mm -hmm. Pilcher is an organ builder that was in Louisville mm -hmm. for a number of years. The Gedeckt on the swell is a Kilgan. The 16-foot Lieblich flute is Kimball. The swell shades are Reuter from First <laughs> Methodist. Now you see why I needed the cheat sheet. Yeah, there's so much. The trumpet and the octave are new or were new at the time. The trumpet came from organ supply. Mm. The console is a 1999 Randall Dyer and Associates, and we love it. It's fabulous, <laughs> it's very particularly lovely. if you could see what it replaced. Um, for a number of years, the church had a not secondhand but thirdhand <laughs> Hill Green Lane console. It sat over there in the corner, oh, wow. and. Um, <laughs> Its tilt tabs had label maker tape on them to let you know 
what stops you were getting. That worked pretty well unless it happened to be a stop that the tape had dried up and fallen <laughs> off of. So uh, it was always exciting to play. <laughs> we are very happy to have the, the Dyer console. Um, it has the tracker touch that mm -hmm. Randy us usually uses. And everything is located where you need it to be. Yeah. It's just very well thought out. Uh, for an organ of, the, of this size, which is 18 ranks, um, it's just, just perfect. Awesome. So we're back at the console with Jane. Uh, why don't we sample some of the stops, especially ones that you particularly like? So sure. uh, have at it. Well, the strings are my favorite. They're culture mm -hmm. and um, just lovely. Well, and they're very present and sweet in the room, too, which I'm sure that works really well during the service. Mm -hmm. Nice. What, what else do you have? Well, here's the eight-foot Gedact. Very 1895. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the four-foot principle. It's got a nice little chiff to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it makes a nice solo stop if you um, use the swell unison off and the swell to swell 16. Wow, that has a very singing quality to it. Yeah. And then there's the trumpet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a big trumpet. <laughs> If you close the box, it 
mimics a sort of a big in your face crumb horn. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, it, it, with the box clothes, it almost has that like crumb horn plus flute sound. To exactly. It. Yeah. And if I'm using it in that situation, I usually put the eight foot gadect with it. So you. That's very nice. Okay. What else? That's it on the uh, swell. Wow, okay, so so it's building a chorus off of the, uh, the flute off and of the, the, flute. The, yeah. the string together if you want, I guess. And, and you can do. That's that works, works nicely for um, softer congregational singing and, and things like that. There's also a tremulant. Um, it's a little fast for my taste, but... Um Gives an energy to it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about, do you want to do uh, the great next? Or? We can do the great next. Okay. We we'll start with the principle. It's got a nice principle. And since I don't have a small reed to use as a solo, a lot of times I'll use the eight foot principle as a solo. Works beautifully. It's beautiful, yeah, yeah. Um, principal chorus, I've got the eight and the four, and then um, my only two foot is a flute. Okay. But it works. Big flute, big two foot flute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the flute is. Very different from on the swell. Right. You know. Well, you, you have uh, 1895 and then like 1955. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or even exactly. later, yeah. It's got that Holloway sound. And uh, for a flute chorus, it's good. It speaks. And then you can put them all together and you've got. The um, Dulciana, which I said is molar. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Works nicely with the flute. It really does. Well, and that dulciana, that's a sound that here in Kentucky, uh, as Kentuckians, and especially in the Midwest, we're used to hearing that a lot. And paired with that, a little more modern flute, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, the 16-foot Palmer is just very quinty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, very quinty. Mm -hmm. But if you need that 16 and you don't want to put the great 16 on, it gives you just that little bit of foundation underneath. Nice. Um, we haven't talked about the mixture. Oh yes, go ahead. Really big. It's big. Mm -hmm. Really big. <laughs> Gives you a nice bite. Yeah, it's present. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't want to use a whole lot of, but sure. when, when you do use it, it's, it makes people sit up and take notice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, so that's pretty much everything on the grate. Okay. So now we go to the pedal. All right. There's this lovely Lieblich Gedeckt in the pedal, 16, 8, and 4, so. Okay. That works. <laughs> um, we have a 32-foot resultant. Okay. Which is real. So um, if I've got the flutes on,
I can add it softly or I can add it on a um, forte, okay. which I'll show you. Our most recent addition is a 16 and 8 foot Borden, which, let's see, I've been here almost 22 years, so sometime back, maybe like 20 years ago or so, mm -hmm. we added it, and it, it really helped fill everything out. So it's... Uh, And then yeah. if I add the 32 foot. That's successful. Yeah, works that out works. real well. Yeah. The only other thing in the pedal is the 16 foot Palmer, which is borrowed from the grade, so. Okay. Oh, I love having that there in two places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. So there again, <laughs> if you want just a little extra in the pedal, you've got that nice quinty. That is nice. Sound. Well, and I personally, I, uh, hold camps all have these quints uh, usually in the pedal and, and yeah. in the grate. I just love them to death. And I, you know, some people use them a lot, some not as much, but here, that one's a little more present. And so it's really mm -hmm. useful. So, yeah. Wonderful. So that's, that's pretty much the tour. And then we've got all the couplers that you would imagine. Um, there's also three MIDI stops, okay. which I have not really messed with that much. Um, <laughs> I know you can set it up to where there's a player and, you know, if you start sure. it and want to walk off during the postlude and freak everybody out, you can do that. But, um, I've, I've not been that brave, so. <laughs> I, I can understand. <laughs> The divided pipework sits in twin chambers high on the front walls. The grate and pedal organ are on the left, and the swell organ is on the right. These chambers are somewhat difficult to get to if you're a larger person, as I am, but I managed to capture a bit of the swell. The trumpet sits directly in front. I believe the forefoot principle sits behind the trumpet, and then the strings, and then a flute. Then if you look around the chamber, you can see the 16-foot Liblick flute from Kimball. I decided to go ahead and brave the straight up and down ladder into the Great Division. The Great has a pretty straightforward layout. The mixture is in the front seat. The slender Dulciana sits behind the mixture. Then here, that's the two-foot flute. Then behind that, there's a chimney flute, and you can see with the little chimneys on top. Then we have the four-foot octave. Then I believe the palmer at eight-foot pitch, which looks like four-foot diapason pipes with caps on the end, sit here next. Just to note, the bottom octave of the palmer is hanging out on a unit chest around the perimeter of the chamber. The last rank on the great chest is the principal. Lastly, the pedal borden that was installed about 20 years ago and the pedal Lieblich Gedeckt are spaced out around the edge of the chamber on unit chests.
Thank you for joining us today. As always, we love your likes, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, that's great too. Also, if you'd like to contact me or if you have any questions about Organ Explore, organexplore at gmail.com, one word, uh, shoot me an email. And Jane Johnson, uh, do you have anything to say about the Lexington chapter of the American Guild of Organists? Well, of course, Owen. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be digging if I wasn't plugging the HEO. I think we have an excellent chapter. We recently celebrated our 75th uh, anniversary year. And the HEO is open not only to organists and choir directors, but to people who just enjoy music and enjoy the organ. We have a category called Friends. Uh, that you can become a member for only $30 a year. It gets you our newsletter, which comes out pretty much monthly and keeps you up to date on all the organ and related activities going on in the Central Kentucky area. So we'd, we'd love to have you as a member of Lexington HEO. Thank you. <laughs>